Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, so, so I would like to welcome all of you to these to the session uh, today. So, first, uh, before we start today's session, we'll uh, take a quick, quick, uh, you know, recap about what we did yesterday. Okay, so yesterday we had an objective of understanding what is actually stress and uh, how uh, there are different managing techniques of stress, right? So basically we uh, try to understand what is stress and what are the types of stress. We try to understand there are internal stressors, there are external stressors, and also there are new stress and there is di distress. And also uh, we used... Uh, the uh, a small visualization technique where we tried uh, to you know understand stress through the uh, through us being in a light room and in a dark room then how that stress part which is the dark room can be decorated and you know uh, can be brightened by us using managing techniques Right. So today we'll be starting with, uh, you know, we'll be doing one of those managing techniques. We'll try to understand what is that technique and how the technique is. We can practice that technique. So before going forward into today's session, uh, we have a like a small activity to just energize everyone. So I want everyone to think of a movie title, which uh, would actually uh, a you know help you help you to you know express your mood at the moment so uh, if i talk about myself um uh, uh, i would say agnipat because i'm quite a bit nervous right now and it just feels like i'm walking on it so like i would take agnipat so um, would anybody like to answer Okay, we have two answers in the chat by Shweta. Uh, she says Swatesh. Grishma says Hum hai Rahi Pyar ke. Uh, okay, Tanugrati says Piku. Okay, Anushka, go ahead. Like you're in the queue. I think Kal Ho Na Ho will describe <laughs> my mood right now. Okay, Kosha, would you like to go ahead? <laughs> Going uh, on trip with friends. <laughs> okay, that's really nice. Um, okay, we have a few more answers in the chat. Uh, okay. okay, we have a lot of people who have said Zindagi na milegi dobara, and yeah, few people have said Dear Zindagi, Navya who saying Dear Zindagi, and Afreen saying Three Idiots. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Rang de Vasanti, oh, uh, Kila, Kila, uh, Kilat, right? Sorry, Kilat feels uh, more patriotic, so she's in a mood of patriotism. Oh, yeah, because it's 26th January today. Happy Republic Day to everybody. <laughs> okay. Oh, job we met. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, Saudamini, would you like to, you know, unmute and tell us? Um, actually, it's been announced that um, colleges are opening and we have exams soon, so frozen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that's really nice. Okay. Um, Dilse, okay, a lot of movies. <laughs> na tum jano na hum, okay. Okay, that's pretty nice that everyone is able to express themselves and it's just so nice that. All of us do watch movies. Okay. <laughs> okay. So as we go back to the session, so today we are going to understand and, you know, uh, to use one of the techniques which we would be going to understand is grounding technique. Um, have you all heard about it or does anybody knows what a grounding technique is? Would anybody like to? Okay. Janeshi, uh, I'm, if, if I'm wrong, spelling your name uh, wrong, like pronouncing it wrong, please. No, it is right. It's Janeshi. Okay, okay. Would you like to um, like 
Yeah, so grounding techniques are the techniques which help you to go back to your senses when you feel very much stressed. So you mm-hmm. can do like uh, senses as in you can start with like what you can hear five four yeah five four three two one that is what I was up about to say that five things you can hear or see four mm-hmm, things mm-hmm. you can hear then two things you can, three things you can touch mm-hmm, two things mm-hmm. you um. you can smell or one mm-hmm. thing which you are feeling right now so this could be like a coming back to something which you are around and mm-hmm. you are being mindful of things rather than just thinking ki what will happen or what had happened so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. being in the moment again helps you to be not much stress and to relieve that and okay. to yeah accept it okay that i'm feeling stress but i can manage things with myself yeah yeah yeah, yeah. pretty much clear right uh, to Thank you so much, Janeshi. Would anybody like to add a point to what Janeshi said, or would like to, you know, uh, take talk about what they feel, what grounding technique is? Okay, so yeah, pretty much summarized as by um, Janeshi that grounding technique. When we look at it, it's a set of you know simple strategies, so which helps us to like detach from the emotions or the stress we are having. uh so for example as we see in the screen it says examples like craving anger or sadness even distractions work you know to help us to focus outwardly on on the external world rather than you know uh towards the inward of ourselves so uh what we can do is we trying to uh also we you know think of it as the distraction as a centering point a safe place so looking out and we are just trying to you know uh thinking of a healthy detachment for from things that are stressing us and that that can be so grounding can help us in that okay so when we think of grounding as a you know a technique which helps us to you know Uh, detach ourselves from the emotion or the pain that we are having at the moment but still uh, why do you know do you think you think like we should you know use grounding technique what do you think why should we use grounding technique in the first place sorry okay yeah kosha go ahead ma'am uh, in order to center ourselves okay in order to so, center uh, ourselves and uh... it helps us to get into the parasympathetic state of nervous system okay. so when so it will help us to uh, detach ourselves and most importantly uh, get out of the that survival mode uh, mm-hmm, when a person mm-hmm. is uh, is in uh, the sympathetic nervous system state okay okay now anybody else who would like to go okay uh, rajveer would you like to go uh, good evening ma'am good evening yeah so ma'am uh, why i can say while stress we start overthinking and we are surrounded full of negativity uh, and i think distractions would work uh, out to be better that it would act as a barrier for all the negativity and i, I would say not not act, uh, exactly uh, creating a barrier but sometimes it could work uh, to stop our overthinking you know ma'am so i think this could be a great thing okay okay thank you thank you rajveer thank you ma'am uh, akshita uh, would you like to share your views yes ma'am like ma'am yesterday like we discussed that uh, there is a threshold uh, that we have for the stress also if yeah. uh, if that uh, if we reach that threshold over the threshold Uh, mm-hmm. our thoughts we will be able to completely think correctly in a particular manner and mm-hmm. also our thoughts would be completely filled with negative uh, su- negative thoughts mostly and uh, so distraction it really helps us to like maintain the balance and it can also like like you told ma'am it can distract us from the uh, stress th- uh, stress which we are feeling so i think mm-hmm. grounding technique helps that Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Akshita. So we have few answers in the chat as well. Afreen says to get us back to the present. Uh, Janeshi says being mindful. Okay. Of of failure says that to come to the present moment to notice tangible aspects of the present time. Uh, Brinda says to help us to manage anxiety, strong emotions, negative memories, and also Sodamani says to reduce the emotional upheaval and let us respond rather than react. 
uh, okay and also vandana says that changing a focus yeah absolutely all of us are like all of you are in the same lines like how it can help us right so it's it's more like just as all of you said though when we are in a you know uh, in an emotional pain and when we need way to detach so it is more like uh, we gaining more towards our over our you know gain gain our control towards our feelings and stay safe right so it just anchors us to our present and reality just like uh, uh like one that said the changing of focus on so like, uh, all of you mentioned that it helps us to be more mindful and to bring us back to the present right so that is uh one of the main reasons why we can use a grounding technique yeah so if we see it can also like you help you to you know attain so these are few points that we can keep in mind so one is that uh, with the you know disso- dissociation that the feeling of numbness right uh ma'am can we just mute there's a dog noise coming up i think you can speak now and uh, there was someone who who was on mute it's okay i think and are you there just a minute guys um sorry for the inconvenience we'll start in like 2 seconds yeah okay and then maybe you can uh, stop the rec- uh, like screen sharing or i'll just speak that's fine you can change the slides then so yeah basically you attain a balance between the two what happens is in grounding if you feeling numb uh, with dissociation it also happens to people who have ptsd um a post traumatic stress disorder even us we deal with numbness sometimes and what happens is we dissociate with reality we are not in tune with the reality that is going on and to attain a balance between the reality the conscious of reality and to be able to tolerate it as well to be able to bear it um i think grounding helps us with that as well so pain is only a feeling and it is not who you are is something that i think this talks about you know grounding because remember that pain is a feeling and it d- does not define you and when you get caught feel like you are your pain right or you are your emotion that you feeling and that is all that exists but it is only one part of your experience right and uh, the others that are just hidden and can be found again through grounding so all of these you know these negative emotions that we put up and uh, the uh, the negative feelings that we experience are something that define us at one point of time when we do grounding what happens is um you can actually find your uh, anchoring feelings the feelings that anchor you to reality and uh, your emotions that anchor to you uh, to to the reality basically so that's what grounding is and how it can help you why to do grounding uh next slide please and so there are various ways of grounding uh, basically types of grounding and uh, there are three major types of grounding mental physical and soothing so mental means focusing on your mind and uh, uh basically your cognitive processes and it uh, basically the physical focuses on your senses the one that we talked about 5 4 3 2 1 that's something that we're going to do i know a uh, lot of you ha- might have done that but because it might be something new 
um we thought we will be introducing that as well so physical grounding is when you engage your senses to make sense of reality and come back to reality and then we have soothing so that's uh, basically talking to yourself in a very kind way and you may find uh, some ground techniques are working for you others are not and that's fine you need to find your own grounding technique that works for you uh, for some people mental might not work physical might work and yeah jineshi self compassion is one way of soothing um mm-hmm. and uh, we are dealing with soothing uh, techniques and soothing self talk in the in the upcoming sessions i think it's the second last and the last session that we're dealing with uh, soothing techniques uh so that's the ways of grounding and uh, types of grounding that you can do it's not necessary for us to be only having mental or physical groundings uh, like one of the grounding techniques that we will be doing today is a mix of mental and physical uh so yeah that's pretty much ways of grounding now uh, next slide please and now there are various guidelines to how to we will be approaching now we are going in the practical hands on experience of the technique uh before we do that right now it's 717 let's um, go and get our pens and paper theek okay, hai let's give ourselves like 2 minutes 719 tak and you guys can get yourselves a pen and paper or pen or a sketch pen whatever it is that you want to write with so it'll help us okay so um yeah basically that so yeah we can bear the saud amini has said we can bear the barking dog and but yeah i think this was my part it's fine guys um i'll i'll speak for now and maybe ann can come back anytime she wants so yeah uh bring your pens and papers and sketch pens or color pens or whatever you want to and we'll start in like 1 minute next 1 minute 719 Oh. once you're back uh-huh. yeah someone else will elaborate a little on the mental uh, part of the guy uh, grounding in okay, the so time if possible yeah yeah sure thank you so mental um, basically is when you are engaging your mind basically for example uh, you are telling or you are having a conversation with yourself where you're trying to see describe your environment in detail so um Mm, for example walls are white uh, there are five pink chairs there is wooden bookshelf against the table or you're describing objects or textures or sounds or when you're trying to process information um in your environment so basically that is when it's mental grounding like for example um okay somebody commented something okay so like play a category game with yourself for example Uh, one grounding could be playing a category game with yourself like think of types of dogs or think of types of musics like this carnatic music there is classical music there is so many types of music blues jazz so uh, when you categorizing things you are cognitively using your brain to ground yourself to see things to put it in structures so when you're doing that when you're trying to describe your environment and uh, basically process your environment through your mental cognitive capabilities that's when you're doing mental grounding when it's physical it's basically engaging your senses and soothing is again it's like a self compassion as jini said jini she said so it's like talking to yourself in a very um, nice relaxing uh, tone that's basically what it is did it help archana yes did thank you, you so much yes yeah uh, anushka there is another question that can you okay. explain the main concept of grounding once again so yeah yeah you can go ahead okay so basically the purpose of grounding technique the basic purpose of it is to allow a person to you know step away from the negative flashbacks or thoughts that they are having so basically techniques such like these help us to you know decrease the intensity 
intensity of the stressor that a person is fa facing or the uh, you know a kind of feeling the person is ha having so basically what we are doing is we we are trying trying to distract that particular distract that that particular you know feeling that we are having just as anushka just recent uh, mentioned about the mental mental way of grounding or the you know physical way of grounding so just just for example the te technique which we'll be doing today the five four three two one technique that that would help us to distract our that that feeling that uh, you know that emotional pain that we are having at the moment or the that negative thoughts that we are having using our senses our five senses basically so that is what the main concept of grounding is uh adrita uh was that helpful I hope I'm audible. Yeah, yeah, you're audible. I think yeah, uh, she's, she's, she's got it. it. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a um, physical grounding. Yes, Adrita, I think you questioned it um, about five, four, three, two, one. But before I is, do, is it a, uh, sorry, yeah. is it not a mixture of mental and physical? Yeah, because when I say. So before, because we have these structures of these bifurcations, you know, that mm -hmm. uh, physical may you basically engage all your senses. So because five, four, three, two, one is a very pure. I think it's a very physical grounding technique because you're engaging all the five senses. So that's why I think it's more of a physical. But I would. You're say also that. trying in terms mm -hmm. of you know engaging to the external environment. So basically, yeah. when you are engaging with your senses, you're trying to engage it using the external with the, environment. Yeah. yeah with the so maybe it's like a mix of both mental and physical. That's a good insight. Thank you, Janishi. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Adrita, you have your hand raised. Would you like to unmute? Mm -hmm. and... Previously, you were telling that uh, thinking of the five. Uh, Five sounds we are hearing currently. That is all the physical grounding, right? Yeah, that's physical grounding. But then you're also engaging with your environment. You're trying to process information from the environment. So that's also like a mental grounding. So it's so like solely physical grounding. Example, what will be it? Solely physical grounding. You want an example for that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, for example, grab grab whatever you can grab. Maybe your chair that you're sitting on. Tightly grab onto that chair as hard as you can. That's basically brings you back to the reality. You can touch it. You're feeling the senses. You're uh, engaging your touch, tactile senses, and you're coming back to the reality that I'm sitting on this chair and I'm in this room. And that's something that you can do. Or for example, like noticing you, your body. That yeah. can be a technique. Also, even uh, running your hand into mm -hmm. cool or warm water to understand right. that. You know what is felt, right? Yeah, right. yeah. Using yeah, basically using the textures and textures, feelings. Yeah, yeah. So basically, stretching your body maybe, and you stretch your body. You try to understand how far the body is stretching, and then how how you're feeling when you are stretching your body parts. You know, right? So these can be complete physical techniques. Correct, Steve. Uh, uh, you have raised your hand. Do you want to ask something? Yeah, uh, so uh, there is a slight difference, right, in the mental and the... Uh, yeah, very slight difference. So mo mostly those two are, you know, morely, more equal. Like, you know, right. just right. perceiving something physically or mentally, we are imagining something. Right. When you are, yeah, when you're processing some information of the environment, it becomes very purely uh, mental grounding. But then when you're... Uh, engaging your senses with the environment then becomes like a both thing because you are engaging your senses that becomes physical but you're also trying to engage your senses with the environment and process the environment so then that becomes like a mix of both okay right? so moreover it it is mostly like diversion techniques yeah kind of very similar to that okay thank you thank you okay so um, do we have any questions in the chat box, Anne? I am... So basically, just there is one question that um, it's not a question. So yeah, more like a question only. Mental can be pure, but 
physical always need a mental processing so it can't be actually pure so that's a yeah. statement sodamni made and um, there is a question by hemlata that being busy with some work is it a physical grounding being busy with your work physical mm. grounding mm. with some work the type of work also makes it different right if you are again engaging your senses in the work mm. then it becomes like a physical and mental grounding that that's mm. happening yeah uh, janesh you are right like visual imagery is a uh, mental uh, you know grounding, grounding where you are actually trying to imagine mm. also uh, like for example if you are using uh, you know to describe your everyday like the whole day activities that right. is also a type of mental uh, in itself grounding. mental grounding in itself okay so so uh, i am sorry if i'm pronouncing your name wrong sohini uh, i think probably it can be called a sensory form of grounding te- technique yeah i mean yeah the sensory form of grounding technique is in itself uh, where we are trying to engage our physical body and try to you know come with the external form yeah okay so abhishek uh, is saying that physical grounding is a practice uh, practical grounding in a realistic situation yeah uh, okay covering with a blanket or quilt during panic attacks is it physical grounding is it a physical grounding mm. yeah it's again tactile right you you like uh, the coziness and the warmth that it gives and it provides you temporary warmth and a little bit of relaxation as well on your body so it's again you're engaging your senses to feel that you yeah. are in a safe space yeah you are trying to you know feel the texture you are trying to feel that warmth right. so that helps engaging in hobbies yeah that can also be a grounding technique so where you are actually you know trying to engage yourself into a, a state where you are you know basically trying to uh, distract yourself from the ex- the stressor or the external uh, pressure that you are having right. or the feeling that you are having definitely like for example i i like cooking that's my hobby so i'm engaging myself physically in into that particular hobby and i'm engaging my senses to taste smell and you know, it depends on what hobby you are doing and how you're engaging with it right journaling could be a grounding but it's a soothing grounding because you're talking to yourself in the diary so depends on what hobby is it that you engage in so yeah so there are few guidelines that i would like to introduce before we start the grounding techniques you can take notice of it and you can like we'll go ahead with that um there are different techniques shub i'm not sure shubra is um yeah shubra so there's no like rec- recommended duration for the techniques during panic attacks there are various panic attacks that can happen in like 5 minutes there are uh, techniques which could take up to 10 minutes it depends on what works for you so the assignment that will be will be giving you and uh, the that will basically have the list of you know all the techniques that you can do and detailed information about what is the technique and how you do it um you guys can try it out and see what works for you okay so we'll tell you how to know what works for you in the guidelines so guidelines are that you know grounding can be done any time any place anywhere and no one has to know that's the great part of grounding and um, you can use grounding when you face the trigger um so what you can do is whenever you feel so rate your emotions from the scale of, on the scale of 1 to 10 and see if it's going beyond 6 the negative emotion that you're not able to handle um or you feel too dissociated so try to particularly scale that emotion on a scale of 1 to 10 if it's going beyond 6 you know on the scale um, then try to do this grounding technique grounding puts a uh, healthy distance between you and these negative feelings so it's good that if you can rate it down so once it goes above 6 you do the grounding and you come back to your senses and come back to the reality so 
during the guy uh, during the grounding keep your eyes open scan the room turn the light on if it's not on and uh, stay in touch with your present okay when i'm telling you to describe something try to be in the present as much as you can be and rate your mood uh, before and after which we'll do like before the grounding starts i'll tell you to rate it uh, on the scale of 10 uh yeah nandini you want to say something go ahead and speak please okay maybe you can write it down on the chat box if you don't want to speak okay so we'll rate the mood before and after grounding so once you rate it you'll understand if something is affecting you in a great manner or in a positive manner so if it's affecting you in a positive manner that means that grounding works for you right and if it's not something that's getting a 9 out of 10 or a 8 out of 10 then you know it's something that's not your cup of tea so you you may may or may not uh, do it then re-rate it afterward of course so before we do the grounding you basically rate how your emotions are feeling and then after the grounding you will see how you feeling so has it gone down if it has gone down uh, then is great then it's great if it was at, at a 9 of anxiousness and after the grounding it has gone to a 3 of anxiousness then that's a great achievement you can go ahead and do that you know um we will not be talking about negative feelings or journal uh, writing um your negative feelings uh so that we do not get in touch with that particular thing because right now what we're doing to do is bring you back to reality so we're not going to focus on any kind of talks what we're going to do is stay neutral avoid judgments as good or bad uh for example the walls are blue i dislike blue because it reminds me of uh, my ex boyfriend or something so that's something that we're not going to do we're not going to label and associate it with any kind of thoughts or judgments simply say the walls are blue and we'll try to move on okay focus on the present not the past not the future as i said i'm not going back to the past uh to think about things or the future that this is how i want my room to be or i don't want it to, to be like this uh now also last point just uh note that the grounding is not as same as a relaxation training grounding is much more active and it's focuses on distraction uh, distraction strategies and is intended to help extreme negative emotions it is believed to be more effective than relaxation training for ptsd and has also um you know that's basically what the guidelines are so we have not noted down the guidelines if you have any uh, doubts you can ask me uh, but we'll proceed with the techniques now we don't have the guidelines written adrita so that's why i said if you have any doubts you can ask me right now so before we do the coping um, um before we do the 54321 technique i would like you to rate your mood right now on a scale of 0 to 10 and 10 means extreme um, extreme emotions it can be anything but your extremest emotion that you know, you won't be able to handle that's your extremeness now on a 0 to 10 um try to you know rate your emotion right now we'll just like take 10 seconds and rate our emotions you can close your eyes as well and and then there uh, is a question in the chat yeah abhishek we'll take it up at the end of the q and a sessions so maybe we can talk about it in detail are we done with the rating guys can you give me a thumbs up or a yes on the chat box you can just unmute and say okay thank you for the response um so basically what we're going to do is 
we are trying to engage all of your five senses okay so hence we'll do the five four three two one technique thank you so much for the responses guys we'll start now okay so the first thing that i want you to do is look around your room or wherever you're sitting you might be sitting outside also that's fine and name five things that you can see around you so just write it down in the paper five things that you can see for instance if someone is having any confusion for instance a painting on the wall or a car or th just think about um how it looks to you or what it is that you don't um see or matlab just try to make sense of what is there around you like i can see a jacket i can see the tube light uh, i can see the table so like five things that you can see once you are done you can write a yes again and then we will like move on great 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 thank you so much guys so once you're done with seeing five things um now the second step is to focus on four things that you can feel so try to use your tactile uh you know and feel the textures around you so maybe if i can feel the blanket you know with the with my hands and that's something i can feel go go ahead and touch them go ahead uh, and you know go out of your seat and just touch things four things that you can feel go ahead and write what you can feel okay four things done great great now the third step is um to name three things that you can hear around you so for example i am able to hear the cars around and the traffic things like that so three things that you can engage your hearing with done great okay now the fourth step is to notice two things that you can smell around you right now so for example i can smell the rubber heat bag that i'm using and yeah my perfume that i put if you can't smell something around you then it can be helpful to name two or three small things that smells that you can uh, that you like you know like fresh baked bread or muffins or a flower so if you can't uh, smell anything right now maybe you can just remind yourself of what you like the smells that you like okay now the fifth step is um one thing that you can taste if you can't uh, taste anything then try to remember some food or an item that you like and try to remember its taste done great okay the so that's basically what's 543 to 1 grounding technique um does anybody want to share so before we we are done with it uh, try and rate your emotions now on the scale of 0 to 10 your emotions or how you feeling just 
all in all in totality try to rate that on the scale of 0 to 10 done guys okay would anybody like to share their experience and how was the scale before how is it now thinking about food now <laughs> that's great okay nandini has her hand up do you want to speak nandini tanugatri do you want to speak yeah so i think um for now because i was in a very pleasant state uh, from the very beginning so the scaling i the rating it did not change much it was like mm -hmm. from 6 rated to 5 but i think this will be really effective when i am like really stressed and uh, i do it because mm -hmm. it will get me distracted uh, that's it that uh, i have jotted down all the points that i had put right mm -hmm. now that's great thank you so much okay um khilat am i pronouncing a name right yes ma'am it's khilat khilat okay thank you um eight because of this technique i was able to use my senses more and especially the smell and taste one so eight on a on a good note right like or okay does it work for stress or anger so vandana it works for any extreme um emotions it will help you calm down in a stressful situation or when you're angry it it should matlab so as i was speaking right some groundings work for some people some might not work for them others so you need to find what works for you okay aksha has written fresh feeling um anybody else who wants to share how they felt or if the rating changed Jineshi, yeah, go ahead, please. And um, so, uh, before the lecture started, I was having a little headache, and uh, mm -hmm. it was like on the scale of uh, one to ten, I could say that uh, eight was something I was feeling that was like high note and not well. But after doing right. this technique uh, and actually smelling things, so uh, when you uh, told to smell the herbs and the wick smell helped me. So it does. change my little mood of things and little pain was down also so it came to from 8 to 5 after the whole uh, technique was done so that's yeah it was great. effective for me thank you that's great that's great um so anybody else who wants to go ahead and share how they felt okay so i'll take this opportunity <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah. I was little nervous too in the beginning, and because all of a sudden in the middle also there was mm -hmm. a lot of noise. But when I uh, so I kind of rated myself around eight, eight, uh, seven point five eight. Mm -hmm. So after the you know after doing the technique and after engaging into the activity, I think it got a little down. Like I could right. smell and you know I was able to see things around me and you know feel. So I think it's now four. uh so yeah okay. so it's it kind of made me feel little more fresh and you know little more engaging grounded so, yeah yeah grounded it like uh, 5 4 3 to 1 helps me anchor myself when i'm anxious so um it's like an anchor to the reality so that's that's what 5 4 3 to 1 technique is we'll do one more step by step guide that's like a mix of mental as well as you know physical grounding and this is something that you can do and also help others do it's a very very uh, easy technique go ahead uh, and next slide next slide yeah you get distracted from the stressful uh, stressful thought that is occurring and uh Nishita has written. I remember my food taste. Tasted my food, which I take some time ago, and I want to say I'm feeling very relaxed. That's great. You common yeah, sense I mean, as I yeah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, as many of like even uh, like Afreen has said that before starting the session, she was feeling that her heart heartbeat is going like you know uh, mm -hmm. fast, and but now she's feeling normal. That's great. That's great. 
so we'll do like a step by step guide that you can do so this was given by the substance abuse and mental health services administration in us and this is something that uh, doctors also do um, and uh, they utilize this with their patients and anybody anybody can do this okay that's it's a very simple grounding technique so to follow this grounding technique what we'll do is first things first we'll sit in sit in whatever comf- comfortable position that we are in and place the feet firmly on the ground or if you are on the bed that's fine just stretch it out and you can feel the bed that's what we want to do stretch it out as much as you can and just place it firmly okay that's the first thing that we'll do once you're done um in the paper that you have just take notice of the date and the time what's the date what's the time just take notice of that now we'll take three deep breaths so take take your breath in slowly the phone aa raha hai and try to release the breath now exhale try and take a deep breath again hold and release take a deep breath in hold release now state what you can observe in the present environment for example as you might have mentioned you can see your chair or something just take notice of it you don't have to write it again because we did that in the 5 4 3 2 1 technique just take notice of it if there are any other things that you can see other than the five things now once you've seen and taken a look around and you've noticed things state it and then remind yourself the next step is reminding yourself that you are in a safe space right now there's no danger there's no threat or challenge in the environment right once you've done that observe your immediate uh, surroundings and describe the items you know now that you might have you know taken notice of the item for example i've taken notice that i have a bottle try to describe the bottle it's silver it's a thermo steel and it has hot water and it's useful so something like that take any one object try and describe it that is around you for example if you have your phone try describing your phone so describe it in maybe four words in the paper that you have or just take notice of it in your mind take a make mental note you can describe two things as well so once you're done you can write a yes to me done to me or whatever great so basically this is a very simple grounding that makes you come into your environment now with this what happens is to increase the disc- dis- uh, intensity of the feeling um what we you can do is after this also if it doesn't feel good if it doesn't feel fine you can also add a visualization exercise or you know sensory diffusers for example i can tell you to imagine a dial okay which like a knob okay and in the knob what you can do is while i am telling you to visualize a knob that's your emotional knob okay and this side it goes on and this side it goes off and i tell you to slowly you know turn down the emotional knob so that is something that you can do but um, yeah basically that should work 
and if it's still not working then visualization can also be something that we can do okay other things also could be clenching your fist um, and holding on to your feelings that you're feeling right now the emotions that you're feeling right now and then when i tell you you let them go and releasing your fist slowly and you're letting those emotions go that's something that you can add on to the relaxation that we do we did okay uh, next slide and Now what happens is while we are doing these techniques of grounding there are sometimes very distracting memories from the past and uh, uh, those memories are very you know disturbing and interfering what happens is they distract you right so what you can do is um there are four things that you can do when there are memories of the past and you want to like distract yourself these are very small grounding techniques that you could do theek hai these are like like focusing on recent or future events for example for this you can like um take note of what is your to do list for the day so in the morning once you get up you're feeling you are thinking a lot about the past or some mistake that happened or some something that happened and it it's making you anxious what you can just do is try to focus on the recent or future events okay for example see what is your to do list or make your to do list in the morning itself or design one if it's at night design one for tomorrow okay reminding yourself that you are currently safe is important and the second thing that you can do is like uh, holding on to the chair is something that you can do uh, feeling the bed and the cushions that are around you could help you remember that this is your safe space and you are fine right now so you'll be fine in the coming time as well okay so reminding your current remembering your current safety the third point is remind yourself of current reality so maybe go ahead and jump up and down okay like just go ahead and jump or uh, sit or crawl on the floor that's fine okay just remember that this is your current reality and you're in tuning yourself with the current reality okay and lastly focus to the present so for example just count the number of um clothes that are hanging on the door or just recite something to yourself maybe recite twinkle twinkle little stars and you will focus on the present because you are reciting something right so yeah basically interrupting your restless thoughts might help you relax even if you know the grounding is something that you are not able to do you don't have the time so these are things that you can do um focus on recent event uh, recent or future events remember your current safety your reality and the present so these are points that you can just like a quick thing if you don't have time for 5 4 3 to 1 or the grounding that we did step by step grounding that we did um i think this could be very helpful because interrupting your restless thoughts might help you relax that's what i said and when you worried it's difficult to think very clearly anxious thought might lead you um to believe damaging incorrect beliefs that we are holding for ourselves so what they do is when you have anxious thoughts what they do is these beliefs that we have and they are not they might not be something very big but when you're anxious it increases those beliefs you might think i don't think i can do this task that might go to an extent where you're believing because of an anxious thought that i'm not good enough to do this so we don't want that we want to break or interrupt that thought pattern and what that what that will do is you will think more clearly and react properly to that emotion rather than you know um exaggerating it so how do we uh, you know end the loop of worry thoughts is something i think uh, we start questioning ourselves what do you think what how could you end the loop of worry thoughts worrying thoughts if someone wants to go ahead and answer 
what could be the first step of ending the loop to worried thoughts? Anybody wants to answer? Guys, in the chat box or you can raise your hand. Distract and interrupt. Yeah, correct, Abhishek. That's one thing they can do. Challenging your beliefs, Rinda. Yeah. Right. Somebody wants we to speak. We have a hand raised. Yeah. Kosha, would you like to go ahead? Yeah, Kosha, go ahead. Uh, yes, ma'am. So, uh, ma'am, uh, we can tear a page, right? Those thoughts which are creating mm -hmm. disturbance. And uh, after that, we can just tear it and throw. Right, right. Yeah, we can burn it out. So I think externalization would work. Hmm. That's something that we can do. The, thank you for sharing. Afreen has written, accepting the situation, accepting that you can't control everything. Nice. Accepting ourselves. Just observe and focus on the moment. Right. Right, Adhuta. Right, Mariam. Sadhya has written, um, Understanding the situation, keeping ourselves busy with. Hmm. Munaza has written, accepting the uncertainty. And Abhishek has written, let the thought pass like a wave and as an observer. Practice progressive muscle relaxation. Yeah, progressive muscle relaxation, you can do. There are various ways. Again, grounding is one way. Understanding and concentration. Correct. The first thing to end a loop of worrying thoughts because it's an endless loop, right? It feels like mindfulness, realize, recognize it's a loop. Correct, correct. Um, the first thing is to be aware that you have this constant loop of thoughts that are concerning you. So yes, awareness is the first thing. If you don't acknowledge the fact that you are worried and you have this repetitive thought that is worrying you, um, I don't think we will be able to you know, deal with it effectively. Because we need to break that thought pattern. And before we break that, we need to know that this is the thought that is worrying. So it is important to be aware if the response is yes. If you are, uh, you know, if you are aware or not. If you are not aware, then we need to work on the awareness. If you are aware, then that's great. Then what you can do after the awareness is there? So the first step is yes. That's the only step you need to do. Okay. And then we have some techniques that you can do. So what you can do is try singing a song about your worry. So for example, um, I have an exam tomorrow and I haven't even touched the book. And I am really, really nervous right now for the next day. What I can do is I can sing a song about my nervousness okay maybe i can yeah me, i can't uh, you know like sing it right now but i would like to sing if there's a song um that's coming into my mind and i'm nervous about something so i'll just like to take take its tempo or its uh, you know upbeat music and i'll frame a song all is well yeah yeah, yeah. all is well is something that i can sing so maybe that or what you can do is, you know, just uh, sing or talk uh, what to, what is worrying you in a hilarious voice. So maybe you can deepen your voice or just try to imitate it. Try to imitate what is worrying you in a hilarious voice. Okay. Um, Steve, I'm just done in another one minute and then I'll ask you to speak. And instead of worrying or focusing on your anxiousness, what you can do is choose a pleasant thing to think about. Okay. So for example, someone you care about, um, a favorite area that you would like to go, like I like beaches. So I think of Goa all the time. Uh, whenever I want to distract myself from unpleasant feelings or anxiousness. Uh, so I think of Goa. It can be something else for you, but you need to think about a favorite area, someone you care about or something you're looking forward to doing later in the day, like having a delicious meal, like I feel like I should have a pizza today. So I'm looking forward to that, you know. So this is something that you can do, these two things. And the last thing is move your focus from your concern to a task at hand. 
and pay attention to that uh, task and how you feel doing that task okay so like listening to music but listen to it in a more um, mindful way where you can you know yeah journaling journaling you can do yeah focusing on the present is important so whatever you are doing do that but in the present and see how you feel so these are the three things that you can interrupt your these worry worrying thoughts that create a loop okay so yeah that's pretty much how you can end the loop of worrying thoughts if that's something that's concerning you now steve you had uh, something that you wanted to ask i think you can go ahead and ask me yeah uh i was uh, adding here on it uh, right we we can you know uh, do the reframings of the thought right negative mm-hmm. thought right reframing and changing perspectives is something that we can do yeah so uh, that's what thank you thank you for sharing so yeah that pretty much marks the end of the grounding techniques and that is something that you can do um we have a assignment basically it's more like a, something that w- you will find very useful for yourself because there's a list there's a huge list of physical soothing and you know um, mental grounding that we have given out and then there are two questions that you have to answer after looking at that so basically you try out some of the grounding techniques and this you know give your top 3 that works for you that's the first question so you have to mark the three uh, grounding that works for you and the second one is you basically describe after practicing it for some days as many days as you can and maybe seven um uh, and then you describe how it felt uh, did you feel like you have more yeah we will be mailing it by tomorrow or day after um So, so you don't have to worry about the assignments right that's now. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just uh, you know, th- keep the things ready with you. So when it is time that you will be getting the mail and you'll receive to you yeah, get you'll get the proper time to some of that's that's also yeah. there. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Anushka, you can carry on with what is. Yeah. Assignment. So that's basically the first part is where you just tell what are your top three grounding techniques that. Are, you think will be working good with you and then you practice it for some days and the second question is how did it feel thank yeah. you so yeah uh, so uh, there was a question about yesterday's assignment so i'll just answer that question once uh, so yesterday's assignment was more about you know you trying to uh, it uh, you know write down something that you're grateful for in a day you can write in a notebook or in any you know you however creative you want to get you can become creative and keep maintain a journal or a notebook or if you want to like make small chits and put it in a you know small jar you can do that as well but you have to do it for 7 days and towards the end of the 7 days you have to actually you know try to go through all the emotions or your all the things that you've grateful for your written and you have to write a paragraph or a page of your experience sharing your experience of how it was doing that activity how it was of keeping a track of your you know feeling of gratitude and you have to just send us that uh, you know experience you know that reflection that you have written i hope snehal it's clear to you yeah you can also go back to our youtube video and see mm-hmm. what the assignment is if that is something that you might have not caught up with yeah today's assignment because it's a little longer uh, for us to post it here it's something that we will be mailing you so yeah just remember that uh, we've described what the assignment is and you can go ahead with that okay so just keep in mind everything will be laid down in the uh, mail that we'll send you regarding today's assignment mm-hmm. and yesterday's Yeah, yeah, Priya, you will be receiving mails. Don't worry. Um, 
so mm. thank you thank you for the... okay so can you please tell the name of the techniques that you had discussed so we discussed 5 4 3 2 1 technique and we also discussed the step by step guide so yeah the step by the... step guide is not something or like a technique technique as sort but it's something that you can ground yourself with on a day to day basis it's a very like a light guide that you can follow to ground yourself Okay. Uh, before the session ends, uh, thank you everyone for joining and you know for uh, making it a very interactive session. And tomorrow we'll be uh, focusing on creative visualization techniques. Uh, so we hope that we see all of you tomorrow as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining in today and taking our time to join. Thank you so much for being so interactive. We thank love you. how much you know. Thank you, Kosha. Thank you so much, uh, guys, for engaging with us on okay. the chat. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. Like, there is a hand raised. Uh, so, Damini, would you like to go ahead? Like, yeah, so Damini, would you like to go ahead and speak? Hi, sorry, I just had one question with regard to the assignment that has been given. So, we have to uh, write three grounding activities that work for us. So, uh, from the step by step guide, you had named two three activities. So, in those activities plus the five four three two one, all of those together, right? Those are the ones that you mean. So, yeah. So, what uh, we are doing is we are gonna mail you a list in the um, worksheet. So, it's a basically okay. a worksheet Got assignment. It. Got it. You'll have a lot of strategies, okay, and how it is done, mm -hmm. and you can see uh, that what are the three top three that you would like to practice for certain days. once you've listed down practice it for certain days and the second question in the worksheet there itself will be you know after practicing these grounding techniques what you noticed or uh, did you feel more in control do your emotions change are you able to calm yourself and focus on something other than unpleasant emotions and situations basically it's all laid down there so you don't have to worry okay Okay, great. Thank you so much. And uh, I just wanted to tell both of you guys that you all have taken a wonderful session. And Anne Marie, um, you're actually quite—I mean, though you're nervous and all—it doesn't really show. You speak very clearly and very nicely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sadamini. Uh, Adrita, uh, do you want to say something? Uh, yes, ma'am. I was asking about that uh, in the post on LinkedIn when I saw uh, saw this. I came across that there will be a hard copy of the journal. Mm -hmm. so how will it be provided hard copy of journal i think that's one person that will be given that we'll see like how that that's working but uh, i think in the mail you should have like a proper um idea of how things are going to be at the end i think there'll be like a brief mail about how things will be and about the journal and the giveaway and everything so don't worry about that there is a certain thing about you know about the journal but you'll find it in the mail at the end okay thank you ma'am thank you aditha there's no deadlines in the as of now but we once we send you the assignment we'll also tell you about the um uh, deadline no shalini there's no whatsapp group as such the team will be deciding whether to go with that or not if we do decide we'll inform you So thank you guys for joining. I guess we can conclude the session now. And uh, yes, we are also looking forward to tomorrow session. We'll have imagery and uh, it's sorry. Uh, there'll be creative visualization and uh, PMR as well. 